morning. Welcome to Rising. We have a spectacular show for you today. Brianna and I were both early today in the studio when we got here. Yes. That never happens. It never happens. We had to was, fight for the makeup chair. I was determined to beat you this morning, Robbie. <laughs> you pulled in a sneak move and, and you, uh, you got in there first. All right, what are we talking about today? Well, uh, the Biden administration is taking hits from all sides over what critics say has been an outright negligent response to the environmental disaster in East Palestine, Ohio. Secretary of Trans Transportation Pete Buttigieg claimed on Twitter that he lacks the authority to implement regulatory measures aimed at preventing derailments like the one in East Palestine. However, according to reporting from our friends at The Lever, this is nothing more than a straw man excuse. Rail law and regulatory experts interviewed by The Lever agreed that Buttigieg's transportation department can and should allow for a reinstatement of regulations, including the replacement of old breaking systems. Meanwhile, over on the right, personalities like Tucker Carlson and T Tulsi Gabbard, who was arguably uh, politically undefined, did not hold back on Fox News last night. You're completely incompetent, completely incompetent. There's never been a cabinet secretary this flamboyantly incompetent and this so obviously uncaring, almost to the point of evil, if we're being honest about it. See, it's no wonder that these people don't trust these, our leaders. These people are in positions of great power and leadership to do exactly what these people need them to do, to show up, to be there, to provide them with exactly what they need during this massive catastrophe. But guess what? They're not there and they're not paying attention to them because they don't care. They see themselves as masters. They see the rest of us as adversaries and subjects. Uh, they, you know, the American people are basically an afterthought. They're very happy to take our taxpayer dollars, very happy to spend them as they please, spend trillions on military adventures around the world, leaving people like those in Palestine, Ohio, those in Jackson, Mississippi, who don't have access to clean drinking water, leaving my fellow veterans to struggle and beg and plead for pennies. Hmm. Yeah, it's been a really interesting dynamic. Uh, watching some of the Tucker Carlson clips in particular, you know, I, I was joking to you before we started filming today, it feels like the end of libertarianism. Because hmm. they're all kind of begging and clamoring, why hasn't the government done more? Why haven't these regulations been into, in effect? And they're completely right. But what I see missing from their analysis, even in Tulsi's analysis right there, it's why haven't they been able to fix the pipes in Jackson, Mississippi? Is there potentially a funding issue? Who is withholding the funding? What is the political party, in the case of Jackson, that is withholding the funding? And you know, why is it that that, that political party, both political parties, frankly, but in the case of Jackson, that political party, um, more beholden to the interest of, let's say, the uh, the water company that they gave this big break to that precipitated the crisis in, in Jackson, Mississippi? Why are they more beholden to the ind rail industry groups that lobbied to have those regulations stripped in the first place? Um, why is money, you know, the, the money and politics piece of it is absent from the analysis, and instead we get this real focus on the individuals involved, which I don't have a problem with. Everyone knows that Pete Buttigieg is not hardly my favorite, but it's always going to be someone else. It's not the fact of Pete Buttigieg, it's the fact of being in that position and being a politician who takes corporate money and who's part of a two-party duopoly. And until their analysis gets there, it just feels a little bit like point scoring to me as opposed to a substantive uh, investment and in what the people of this community are going through. I don't think libertarianism says that you're, you're allowed to poison people, poison their water, make them sick, um, do all sorts of things, and, and suffer no consequence for it. In, in, libertarianism is all about property rights. If you're, if you're, if you're making my home unlivable because you've made the air sick, because you recklessly caused an explosion or whatever it is, no, you're supposed to pay, you're not allowed to do that. You're supposed to pay compensation for that. And there's all sorts of ways the legal system has limited how people have to pay, how organizations and companies That's have true, to pay compensation. I don't think Robbie, it's a I've heard you argue, blow to libertarianism. I've heard, heard you argue, for instance, against the existence of the FDA, mm -hmm. arguing that private companies could regulate food as well or better than the government. And in this situation, what we're seeing These are is, two different things, though, the regulation and the liability. Right. I'm talking about the regulation. Right. And that's what Tucker Carlson in, in, is talking about in this clip. So Tucker Carlson, all of them over on Fox News are talking about why haven't Buttigieg and Biden required these higher quality breaks that I talked about in my radar yesterday? Why haven't Buttigieg and Biden required that toxic uh, co toxic chemicals, um, sorry, the kind of chemicals that were being carried on the train be part of the regulations uh, uh, labeled as hazardous materials that would have required lower speeds and other kinds of safety 
regulations. Why didn't that happen? My argument is because we know, this isn't conjecture, that rail industry groups lobbied for those regulations not to be in place. And the problem is, there is a problem with government, but it's that it's bound up in this corporatocracy. If your argument as a, as a libertarian, broadly speaking, is that we need to have fewer regulations, that we shouldn't have government, that we should let private industry do what it wants, well, then you're in a situation where exactly this happens. And so now your you're argument strawmanning is- strawmanning this concept. The whole thing is government, right? I mean, the, 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 the government owns the, the tracks, right? They, have, they, they acquire people's land to build them in the first place. I mean, that's, like a, that's a violation of libertarianism in the first place. Well, I, I'm talking about the, the Norfolk Southern Railroad. Yeah. That's who lobbied to get rid of these regulations. And in a world without the government, they would be not only able to do exactly what they've done, but maybe even more. In a world without the government, they wouldn't even exist. I'm sorry? They wouldn't even exist. The private rail company wouldn't exist, but for the government, the, 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 the government has to has to force force people out of their homes to lay down the tracks. I, I'm in the not first entirely place. sure what the argument is, is, here, sir, Robbie. My point is that I, I eminent domain is how those things. Were I built. understand that you're, you're you're saying that if people legally were able to be held responsible, then maybe the private industry would see it as, as financially advantageous to and follow. And who line. limits their liability? It's but the government. The, no, that's not true. It's corporations who have worked. Over time, to limit the law's ability to actually hold them accountable. Who actually does that is the they're, legislators. It's the government. Exactly, because they're there's because they're corrupt. That's the problem. Right? So I think I've I've said this a couple of times. So I don't think I need to re keep repeating it. But fundamentally, instead of talking about the cor corruption of the government, you have these figures over on Fox News talking about the fact that Pete Buttigieg is just a bad person. And as though although I might agree with that in principle, at the end of the day, Pete Buttigieg is just going to be replaced by another person with an R or a D or an I next to their name. And unless we fundamentally, I mean, he has presided over a unique Unless number of... Unless the of the structural issues, it's just going to keep happening. Sure, but he, he's having a uniquely disastrous term as Transportation Secretary, I would say, which is maybe not surprising because he has no experience in this field and no... Maybe, but it wasn't Pete Buttigieg that got rid of those regulations. I mean, but, honestly, it was the Obama administration that was responsible, and it was the Trump administration that was responsible for different aspects of the rulemaking that led to this crisis. So this is not a partisan issue. And my concern is, again, that over on Fox News, there seems to be an a, a investment in point scoring. I was very clear on my radar yesterday that this is a bipartisan tragedy. And if you're more focused on scoring points, I am really concerned that the people in East Palestine aren't actually going to get the kind of comprehensive reforms that would prevent something like this from happening. Yeah, I, I suspect it is an interest in point scoring. Yeah, I yeah. agree with yeah. you on that. <laughs> well, Americans living in East Palestine, Ohio, and its surrounding towns continue to raise red flags weeks after fires burned thousands of pounds of spilled chemicals, sending toxic fumes into the atmosphere. Dozens of residents packed into a high school gym in East Palestine yesterday, uh, where, according to CNN, local leaders took questions from emotional residents who expressed distrust of officials' accounts. And there was a noticeable odor in the air. And that is one of the complaints that people brought to the meeting last night. They want to know if the air is, is safe to breathe, why are people getting sick? They're cowards. Norfolk Southern a no-show Wednesday night, citing concerns for employee safety, but pledging to stay in East Palestine to fix it. Hundreds of people turned out in what was supposed to be an open house format, where people could go up to booths and individually direct questions to the EPA and elected leaders. That's not what we came for. We came for a town meeting. East Palestine Mayor Trent Conaway said he thought the open house style would be safer, but changed it back to a town hall style midway through. He tried his best to keep it orderly as people shouted out questions. My greatest concern is that my citizens feel safe. But many left the meeting without feeling any safer. If the air is so clean and the water is safe, why is everybody having all these symptoms? My eyes were burning, my head was pounding, my chest was hurting, my throat was hurting, I couldn't quit coughing. Yeah, reports of there being a chemical smell in the air. I saw Jordan Territon over Reports at, of dead animals. Yeah, I saw Jordan Territon over at Status Coup interviewing a man who raises foxes in the area who said one of his foxes immediately died. Uh, he took the rest of the vet. Some were experiencing neurological issues. Others are just visibly sick. Um, they're showing, they're testing with elevated levels of, you know, liver activity and other kinds of things that are very concerning, especially now we're talking about mammals and not kind of... But the EPA and, says everything's safe. There's nothing to worry about. I mean, shouldn't, isn't this a, a challenge to liberal acceptance of 
government expertise and Absolutely. authority. Absolutely. Liberals shouldn't accept government expertise. But we're supposed to I default don't. to the, the science, whatever the scientists, whatever they say. Yeah, whoever says that's a moron, but it's yeah. nothing that I think the left, the left no, no, position. No, I know. I know that's not what you say. The left position has always been that there's so much corruption and cronyism in these organizations that we need to get money out of politics. Like all of these things root, root from the same kinds of issues. Moreover, the EPA will say has been defunded something that, again, that T Tucker Carlson even, uh, this is stuff that's being talked about on Fox News now. Why doesn't the EPA have the resources for this? Even people on Fox News are saying the problem here in part is the routine defunding of these kinds of organizations. So that is part of it. Part of it is that they are saying, they are making more limited claims. Like, we tested these houses for these chemicals and this air quality, and that that is, mm -hmm. we're not finding the presence of those things, right? But just because you're not testing, you're not finding vinyl chloride in this house doesn't mean that there aren't toxic elements in the water, that there are other chemicals that they shouldn't be testing for, et cetera. And I think this is a part of an issue where the lack of kind of science literacy can be exploited by organizations to give the perception that something is safe when in fact it is not. I mean, the, the APA has become a something a lot of conservatives don't like, I think for good reason, because its main goal is to thwart buildings from being development, uh, buildings from being built, various projects from going on, is to like stand in the way of people getting homes and progress, et cetera. And that, that might be, but in this moment, when there's a tragedy like the one that's unfolding, I think a lot of people really wish there were an organization full of neutral scientists that weren't being paid by corporations who could be trusted to make the kind of assessments about health and safety that the people are really relying on. And moreover, I think a lot of people would really appreciate, particularly in a working class town like this, the resources to not have to wait around and see what happens, but to actually be relocated somewhere else, to have, um, you know, to be able to pay for hotel rooms or have new housing, get their kids in new schools, have public transportation to get them where they need to go. Because People are, are really stuck. They have animals that need to be taken care of. Many people didn't want to evacuate because they, they have responsibilities. They can't just leave their, their livestock. Um, and I think that a lot of emergency protocols don't really appreciate that everyone's life isn't living in a studio apartment in, yeah. in New York City or Washington, D.C. Nobody so, wants to evacuate their home. I mean, yeah. if, it's, if it's, I mean, if there's a rampaging fire coming your way, you go. But if it's unclear, I mean, this is, you can't see the harms of this. There are the alleged harms, right? It's in the air. It's in the water. Yeah. You don't know. It's the uncertainty. So, I mean, if it were me and I'm a person with means, I would obviously leave. Mm -hmm. But the, the horrible truth is that for so many people, that's just not an option. So what do we do then? And should we be also talking about having more robust supports for people to get out of Dodge? It's a relatively small town. Like, are we saying as a country, when there is potentially one of the biggest, you know, chemical disasters of the last mm -hmm. few decades at least, we can't even take care of our own people in this way in the richest country in the history of the world. And by the way, as a consequence of, of negligence by a railroad company that itself earns over $10 billion they, a year in profit. They, they should pay for all of it. It's not a challenge to libertarianism to say a company that caused this calamity should pay for all of the associated cost with it. That's you do something wrong, you pay for it. That's yeah, core to my ideology. As we, as we see so often, it just re rarely, rarely happens. We saw this with Stephen Donziger in um, Ecuador. Uh, we see it in, in corporate law case after corporate law case. They're very, very good at avoiding liability. So we can agree on what should happen, but we'll have to stay tuned to see what actually does happen. I'm looking forward to your radar coming up next.